Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. Come on children, let me welcome you to a lesson in standard 5th subject is scholarship and we will be doing a lesson in scholarship English today children and the name of the lesson is lesson number 5.1 punctuation. So now have you heard this word before? Have you heard about punctuation in English? So what are punctuations actually we call them punctuation marks. Okay, there are certain markers in the English language which have got a certain duty or a certain role to perform. For example, when I want to say something and I want to stop there, okay, I do not want to continue that sentence. So, when I am writing that sentence down on a piece of paper and now I know that I want to end the sentence here, I do not want to continue the sentence, what will I do? I will put a full stop. So, in the same way, just like when I want to end a sentence, I use a full stop. In the same way, when I want to pause the sentence for some time, I use a comma. Okay, when I want to seek certain information or when I want to ask a question, then I use a question mark and so on and so forth. So, all these marks that I may use are called as punctuation marks. Okay, so we are going to learn more about punctuation marks today. Which are the various punctuation marks that we use in English language? Now, there are many. Okay, we are not going to look at all of them. We are going to pick up around 10 or 12 of the punctuation marks and try to understand how they are used, why they are used. We will look at certain examples also. Okay, so come on, let's go to our lesson for today and learn more about punctuation in English. So, here comes all the punctuation marks that we could possibly have. So, the first one is called as the period or it is also called as the full stop. Now, all these marks, children, we use it when we write English, not when we speak, okay? When we speak, we have to make use of pauses, we have to make use of our voice, we have to make use of voice modulation, etc., when we write language, that is the time we make use of all these punctuation marks. So, the first one is period or full stop. The second one is question mark. Okay, and see how does the question mark look like? It looks like this. The period is in the form of a dot. The dot is of course not very big, okay. This dot I have shown you as a big dot so that you can understand what it is. Then, number three we have the exclamation mark which looks like this. There is a line and a dot. And when do you use an exclamation mark? You use it when you want to show surprise, when you want to show amazement, when you want to show fear. Okay, so that time you use an exclamation mark. Then you have at number four, you have a comma which is not a full stop. Okay, when you put a full stop means you are ending the sentence there. A comma means it is between, before a full stop. Alright, then you have the colon or the colon as we call it. You have the semicolon. The colon, you have two dots. That is, the semicolon is half of the colon. So, you have one dot and a comma. Then you have a dash which you use to underline certain things. Then you have a hyphen which you use as a small dash between two words. Then you have a round bracket, square bracket, slash, apostrophe, speech marks or we also call them as double inverted commas and ellipsis that is when you want to say something but you're not saying it also, you're leaving the sentence unfinished we make use of ellipses. So, these are all the different kind of punctuation marks in English language. Alright, now we will try and take a look at many of them. 
okay and we will try and understand what the meaning of these punctuation marks are and also we will see examples for each and then we will try and solve some interesting questions also based on these punctuation marks so come on let's start by understanding this concept before we go to the concept of punctuation marks now there is a concept of capital letters also in english language you know what are capital letters a b c d e f that is the letters of the alphabet we write it in upper case or in capital letters and lower case or in small letters now when you were in a very young, lower class that is when you were in the kg uh, junior kg senior kg sometimes even in the nursery they have taught you how to write a b c d both in capital letters as well as in small letters or as we call it upper case and lower case okay now these capital letters also are very very important as far as writing of english is concerned so there are certain places where you use capital letter specially all right so before we go to the actual punctuation marks let us understand this important concept also in english language that is the concept of capital letters so now what does the concept of capital letters say english sentences always begin with a capital letter for example my home is very nice so there are five words in the sentence my home is very and nice which is the first word it is my so where is the sentence starting with the sentence is starting with the word my so in my which is the first letter it is m so this m will always be capital that is whenever you begin a sentence in english the first word will always begin with a capital letter so this is one rule regarding capital letters in english let's go to some more rules now the pronoun i is always capital so wherever you write i you write it always as capital when it is a pronoun okay instead of saying your name again and again you say i i will be coming i would like to do this so this i will always be capital when it is a pronoun then all names of people start with a capital letter that is all proper nouns names of people what are proper nouns names of people names of places names of things so all names of people start with a capital letter for example we have gopal we have meena we have rekha we have alisha etc so whenever you write the name of a person you always write it with a capital letter in the beginning then we have names of cities villages etc start with capital letters so wherever there are names of places okay then the places have got particular names when the places names of places are proper nouns then they also begin with a capital letter for example you have pune beginning with a capital p mumbai beginning with a capital m delhi beginning with a capital d etc coming forward now to the last one names of mountains rivers countries etc also start with capital letters so just like i told you in the beginning all proper nouns they start with capital letters so when you say mountain you can write it with a small m when you say rivers you can say write it with a small r but when i say ganga which is a name of a river then i write capital g a n g a ganga when i write mountains it is written with a small m but when i write himalaya then i write it capital h i m a l a y a etc okay so all proper nouns begin with a capital letter so this is one thing that we have to learn when we learn punctuation this is of course not part of any punctuation mark but then you have to understand this concept also so this was about capital letters and their use in english language now let's move on and let's learn about some punctuation marks so this is the first one and what is it called it's called as a comma c o m m a -M -A, comma okay now what is a comma let's see a comma is placed between words in a sentence and between two phrases or sometimes sentences also for example see it is in fact you can say that it is used to join sentences for example see i like mangoes bananas oranges and grapes so what have i done 
I have joined these sentences. For example, I could have said, I like mangoes, I like bananas, I like oranges, I like grapes. But what have I done? I have used a conjunction and and I have used commas to join these sentences. See, I cannot write. It will be grammatically wrong if I write, I like mangoes and bananas and oranges and grapes will be wrong. So instead of writing and again and again, I use commas. So I write, I like mangoes, comma, bananas, comma, oranges and grapes. Okay, look at the next one. Yes, comma, I can. No, comma, you can't. So see how I'm using commas between two phrases or sometimes also between two sentences. So the comma is our first punctuation mark for today. Coming to the next one, it is full stop. Full stop means where the discussion ends, where the sentence ends. It is also called as period. You must have seen people arguing and saying, I will not come today. Period means discussion is over. Full stop. All right. Let's take a look at the meaning of this full stop now. Full stop is used to end a sentence. When you want to put an end to a sentence, there we make use of full stop. And also, it is used in abbreviations of names, patterns and degrees. So, see the first example. I go to school. Full stop means over. I go to school. That's a sentence and I want to end it there. Then we have H dot M. P dot M. Now, this is for timing, okay? Anti meridian and pre meridian. If it is before 12 o'clock, you say AM. If it is after 12 noon, we say PM. Then you have BA, that is Bachelors of Arts, BCom, Bachelors of Commerce, BSc, Bachelors of Science. So, full stop is also used when you want to end a sentence. All right? Coming to the next one. What is this? This is a question mark. Question mark is used at the end of a question. What is your name? Where is my pen? Who is this? So these are all question marks. They are asked. They are used in order to seek information. Then you have an apostrophe. A-P-O-S-T-R-O-P-H-E. Apostrophe. Now we have not written apostrophe. Uh, it is used sometimes as a single straight line also. Okay, a small straight line. See, apostrophe is used to indicate possession, to show that something is mine. For example, when I say Raju's pencil, whose pencil? Raju's. So see, I added the apostrophe and the S. If you do not add the apostrophe and you add the S, sometimes it becomes singular plural. For example, I say doll. And what is a plural? It is dolls. There, I will not use apostrophe, okay? And see the next one, Mina's doll. Whose doll? Mina's doll. It is also used in contracted forms. That is, if I want to write don't instead of do not, then I use an apostrophe. If I write isn't instead of is not, I use an apostrophe. Won't, okay? Can't. All these places, we have used an apostrophe. Okay, so this is the meaning of an apostrophe. Let's see what an exclamation mark means. So this is an exclamation mark. Okay, now exclamation marks are used to indicate intense feelings. Now intense feeling could be anything. Feeling of joy, feeling of sorrow, fear, amazement, anything. But it should be a strong feeling, intense feeling. Okay, and the way you say an exclamatory sentence is also different. See, this sentence, the first one, what a beautiful dress. See how have I said it? Have I said, what a beautiful dress? No, then that is, doesn't show a strong feeling. I loved the dress. I saw the dress and I loved it. So what am I saying? I'm saying, what a beautiful dress. Okay, look at the next one. Oh, what a great idea. So see, I'm amazed. I'm surprised that, oh, what a great idea this is. I'm very happy. Alright, so it exclamation mark is used in order to indicate intense feelings. And remember, like I told you, all these marks are used in written English. In spoken English, then how, this is how you use your voice. For example, if there is an exclamation mark, I will say, oh, what a great idea. If there is no exclamation mark, I will say, oh, what a great idea. 
Okay, so this is how exclamation mark is used to express strong feelings. Next comes, this is the inverted commas or the speech marks. We also call them as speech marks. Inverted commas. The comma is straight. Now this comma has gone on top. Inverted. Let's see what the meaning of it is. It is used in direct speech. He said that the sun rises in the east. Mohan said, I am ill. So you see in the first sentence, it is not direct speech. He said that the sun rises in the east. Is there any kind of uh, inverted commas here? No. But look at the next sentence. It is, you are saying Mohan said, I am ill. So it is not that Mohan said that he is ill. Mohan said, I am ill. So we are talking about what Mohan sped, said, exactly what he spoke. His speech, that is where we make use of inverted commas or speech marks. Let's go to the next one now and that is a semicolon. So see what the semicolon looks like? It looks like this. So there is a full stop and there is a comma. Okay, so this is a semicolon. Now, what is a semicolon? What are the uses of a semicolon? Let's see. So, semicolon is used to join clauses. Simple. Okay, jo there are clauses which are dependent. There are clauses which are independent. So, semicolon uses the, uh, does the work of joining these clauses. For example, dad is going bald. Semicolon, his head is, hair is getting thinner. So, dad is losing a lot of hair. Okay, so I'm saying dad is going bald. I'm using a semicolon and saying his hair is getting thinner. Call me tomorrow. I'll tell you then. Alright, so these are how semicolons are used. Coming to the last, you can say punctuation mark that we will see today and that is a hyphen. So now, what are hyphens used for? So a hyphen, that is, it is like a small dash, is a punctuation mark that's used to join words or parts of words. For example, look at the exa here, first one, an English speaking country. So see, the two words English and speaking is joined together using a hyphen. A full length portrait of the king hung on the wall. So full and length is joined together using an hyphen. Okay, children, so these are all the various punctuation marks that we have seen now. Now, the next thing that we will do is we will look at various examples now. Let's see some example questions where these punctuation marks are used or there are questions which are based on these punctuation marks. So, come on, let's start with the first question for today. All the words in the picture are related to which punctuation mark? So, where is the picture? Here it is. Okay, so it is a picture of a cube, I think. Alright, or a box. There are various words written on it. So, the words are what, which, when, why, how. So, these words are related to which punctuation mark they are asking us. So, come on, let's check to which punctuation marks these words could be related. So, are these related to one full stop, two apostrophe, three commas or four question marks? So, these words are related to which punctuation mark, children? Yes, it is question mark. So, whenever you ask a question, you make use of all these punctuation marks, all these words and you will learn very soon that all these words are called as the WH question words. So, you say, what is your name? When are you coming? Which is your house? How many friends do you have? Why are you late? So, see, I'm asking all these questions using these words, which are all, what can you say? WH words or words related to questions. Okay, coming to the next example. Identify the punctuation mark for this sentence. So, here is your sentence. Are you ready? So, what do you think this is? Now, this is a question, right? You're asking for some information. So, when I say, are you ready? Then, which will be the question mark? Which will be the punctuation mark that I will use? Will you use a full stop here? Will you use a comma here? Will you use a question mark here? Or an apostrophe? So, what are you going to use over here? You will use a question mark over here. 
and here question mark is not the second one children but let me just correct it for you the question mark is the third one here okay so you will what will you do you will color the third one okay now coming to the next example question choose the correct alternative so here are your alternatives here is one sentence which is given to you and you have to see which will be the correct alternative sentence so one there should be a capital letter for he the sentence is he gave a gift to raja and rani or rani and raja so there should be a capital for the h e he that that is one option that is you should start a sentence with a capital second they are saying capital r for the word rani and raja yes so this also seems right the third one is full stop after the word raja that is after you finish a sentence you are supposed to put full stop this also seems right so then is all of the above correct so 1 2 3 or 4 which one is the correct one children it is the fourth one because all of the above should come if you want to write the sentence correctly for example see the sentence will be written like this he with a capital h gave a gift to rani with a capital r and raja with a capital r again and there is a full stop after the word raja okay so this is the correct answer this is the correct way in which the sentence should be written coming to the next example which alphabet should be a capital letter in the given sentence so which of these alphabets will be a capital letter so i live in nagpur is the sentence so will you write l as capital will you write the i in the in as capital will you write the n in the nagpur as capital or will you write the r at the end of the word nagpur as capital so 1 2 3 4 which one do you think is the right answer yes it is the third one it will be i live in nagpur n a g capital n okay coming to the next one choose the punctuation mark which is not seen in the picture here is a picture for you and here there are the four punctuation marks try to understand which they are so here you can see a question mark is already there and the double inverted commas are they seen wait 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 for it see the next one full stop yes it is there the exclamation mark is there so which one is not there 1 2 3 or 4 which one is not there the second one is not there the double inverted commas or the speech marks are not there very simple yes coming to the next one sixth example how many capital letters should be there in the given sentence look at the sentence i saw the match with sachin at mumbai so this is the sentence how many capital letters should be there here so should there be one capital letter should there be two capital letters three capital letters or four capital letters so how many capital letters should be there come on think there should be option number 3 three capital letters and which are they i will be capital saw the match with sachin the s will be capital at mumbai the m will be capital okay so option number 3 there should be three capital letters coming to question number 7 choose the correct sentence showing proper position of a comma so where all should the comma come so which one is correct so the first option is i like apples comma bananas and grapes and oranges next i like apples and bananas comma grapes comma oranges third i like apples comma bananas comma grapes comma and oranges fourth i like apples comma bananas comma grapes and oranges so 1 2 3 4 4 which one will be the correct one how where where is a comma used correctly the comma is used correctly in sentence number 
I like apples, comma, bananas, comma, grapes and oranges. Okay, come to the next question. Where should we put comma in the sentence? Where now? Look at the sentence. Yes, of course. So, where should you put a comma? Come on, after yes or after off, after course or nowhere. I don't want to put a comma anywhere in the sentence. But where is the comma supposed to be appearing in the sentence? It is the first one after yes. So, it is yes, of course. So, this is where the comma will be put after yes. Coming to the next one now. Put the full stop at a proper place in the following box. So, here is the sentence for you. Birds are flying in the sky, the sun is setting, there is a tree. You're supposed to put full stops here at the proper place. So, here is one full stop. The birds are flying in the sky, full stop. The sun is setting, full stop. There is a tree, full stop. Okay, and then the sentence will look like this. Birds are flying in the sky, the sun is setting, there is a tree. Okay, coming to the next example of the 10th example. How many full stops should be there in the given line? Here is a line for you. Birds are flying in the sky, the sun is setting, there is a tree. We just saw this example. So, how many full stops should be there? What do you think? Is it 1, 2, 3 or 4? How many full stops? Yes, we have option number 3 which is the right answer. There should be three full stops. So, the first one will come after sky. Birds are flying in the sky. The sun is setting full stop. There is a tree full stop. Okay, children. So, these were some example questions based on punctuation marks. We saw a few questions based on capital letters and they use also. Alright. So, what will you do now? Please watch the entire video children and after you finish watching the video, you will also try to attempt the exercises which I have set for you. So children, now you have watched the video. So after you watch the video now, you will have to complete a few simple tasks. Now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones. Now, after you watch the video, what will you do? You will please go to the description box which is given below the video. So, what is the description box? See, the description box looks like this. Alright? And after you go to the description box, you will see that there are a few questions there. Now, what are these questions about? These questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the Google form. So now what is the Google form children? It is nothing but a simple form. There are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself. So these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video. So children, wasn't that a very interesting lesson? I'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which I keep posting regularly.